It's time to beat the heat on the season premiere of Friday Night Fever. Big clashes right off the bat in week one as Blair Oaks tangles with Maryville. And it's a whole new era for battle out in Kansas City. Helias and the Jays kick things off under the lights at home, while Rockbridge and Tolton do the same in Como. All those games and much, much more right now on the season premiere of KOMU8's Friday Night Fever. Happy Friday Night Fever, everybody. Week one was a hot one. Nobody was hotter than the Tolton offense as they opened the new season at home. Trailblazers facing Salisbury. This was a one-point game a year ago. It wasn't tonight. Tolton's second drive marching into the red zone. Jake Ryan to Cam Lee, who makes a move to the pylon for the 11-yard score. 7-0. Future Blazers fired up for good reason. 13-0 Tolton still in the first quarter. And Patrick White going downfield, picked off by Lee. Lee doing it on both sides of the ball. Very next play, told you about him earlier tonight. The brothers, Jake Ryan to Sam Ryan. 52-yard strike. Cam and Sam want to get to 30 touchdowns together this year. They had two in the first quarter tonight. 27-0 Blazers. They go to the ground game. Will Brightweiser, 20 yards out. Second of three scores in the first half for Brightweiser. Very next drive, Jake Ryan punches it in from a yard out. 48 points for Tolton in the first half. They've got a 48-0 lead late in the ball game. Golden hour at Rockbridge. Sam Kaiser and the Bruins hosting Park Hill South from KC. Harvard commit wasted no time. Scoreless in the first. Kaiser escapes and he finds Riley rolling. 73 yards. This is going to go all the way. Rockbridge led it 7-0. Kaiser wasn't the only Bruin QB making plays. His cousin Brady Davidson to Cooper Myers over the middle. Another big game for the Bruins that put Rockbridge in field goal range. And Rockbridge's kicker is an Army commit, Joey Scardina. He drills a 57-yard field goal. 57 yards, 10-0 Rockbridge. The Park Hill South defense found some answers. Brock Harmon stalling the drive with that sack. It was tied at 10 at the half, and it's 10-10 in the third quarter right now. Hickman opening at North Kansas City. Not an ideal first play of the season for the Cupies. Opening kickoff, and it's Herb Bass who makes a few Cupies miss, and he is going to go. The opening kickoff goes for a touchdown. Hickman down 7-0 right out of the gates. But the Hickman defense woke up, and they showed out. Fourth down for North Kansas City. Alden Smith gets through the line and forces the turnover on downs. He's fired up for the Cupes. And later in the quarter, it's the QP defense and Alden Smith again. The Hornets fumble and Smith jumps on it to get the ball back. Hickman couldn't get going on offense tonight. Third down, Carter Holiday goes to his D1 tight end, future D1 tight end, Brock Camp. And let's check the latest score if we have it. We don't have it there. Be sure to check KOMU.com for that one. It's become a week one tradition. Class two powerhouses Blair Oaks and Maryville testing their medal against each other right out of the gates on a neutral site. They've met in the Kansas City area before. Tonight's battleground, UCM Stadium in Warrensburg. Remember that number 11 on your screen right there for the future. Blair Oaks always has some players, don't they? First quarter, Falcons punting. It squeaks out of the hands of the Maryville returner. And Blair Oaks is going to recover here. That's got him pumped up. Good start for Blair Oaks. The drive after the punt. Dylan Hare graduated. Who's next? The new quarterback, Tyler Bax. Eight-yard touchdown, 7-0 Falcons. Same quarter. Told you a moment ago, watch number 11. Well, here he comes. It's Joe Wildy. 18-yard touchdown from Bax. Falcons up by two scores. And here comes the defense for Blair Oaks. It's that same number 11. Joe Wildy with the interception this time. Blair Oaks up big in the third quarter, 41-14. Highway 22 rivalry, Centralia Rotary Club cooking on the grill, and the Panther offense cooking against Mexico. First play of the season, the returning quarterback, Cullen Bennett, to Caden Dunn, and Dunn does the rest, 61 yards down the sideline, 6-0 Panthers. 
first play of the second quarter. Mexico in the red zone, but Bo Hatton blows up this play, knocking the ball loose. Centralia's Brandon Russell grabs the fumble, and that stops the Bulldogs. Due to the excessive heat, mandatory water breaks every quarter. The Panthers come out of that break fierce. Cullen Bennett connects with Bo Hatton. After forcing the fumble earlier, Hatton takes it 63 yards for another Panther score. That put them up 14-0. It's 27-0 in the fourth quarter. West Strand in Kingdom City hoping to avenge a 28-point shutout loss against North Callaway last year. Lane Kimbley, first career start at quarterback for the T-Birds after three years at receiver. The West Strand's Marshall Kitchen picks him off. That set up a Hornet score to make it 6-0. North Callaway responds on the ensuing drive. 13-yard touchdown run from Riley Humphrey to even the score at 6. Lane Kimbley got it done for the T-Birds on defense. He intercepts his counterpart halfway through the second quarter. Westran with a 14-6 lead in the third. Let's go to the scoreboard. Montgomery County and Herman, no score there. Macon falls to Kirksville 34-6. Well, for the second straight year, Helias and Hannibal facing each other to start the season last year. The Crusaders held five-star running back Aeneas Williams to just two touchdowns. He scores four or five routinely. And Helias beat the Pirates. Rematch with Williams now committed to Notre Dame. And there's your new Helias starting quarterback, Sam Weirich, taking over for Drew Miller. Pirates fourth down on their first drive. It's Logan Montoya and Trey Rice on the stop. The Helias dads are loving it as it's a turnover on downs. And Sam Weirich pitches to Mason French, who scores from two yards out. PAT was good. French is having fun with the new QB1. Helias up seven going on another fourth down. This time Hannibal airs it out. Austin Weaver knocks it away. Saders rolling up 35-7 in the fourth quarter. Jeff City players staying hydrated with pickles and pickle juice because of the sodium. Taking on Osage. Jay's up 20 to nothing in the second and the defense holding strong. Third and 11. Osage airing it out. Ryan Tadson jumps the route for the pick. Jay offense ran for over 350 yards per game last year. Cantrell Jordan off to a good start this year. 17-yard touchdown or from the 17, and it's Jeff City up 27-0. Jeff City still hunting for the shutout. It's fourth down and a stop right there. Zach Barnes makes the stop, and it's 33-0. Jay's up in the fourth quarter. Battle in KC taking on Park Hill. Start of the Matthew Herman era, second quarter. Spartans down 14-6. Jack. Hullinger finds Frederick Marshall on the slant. That's a big gain. A few plays later. This time it's Jaquel Wright on the other end for a big pickup. Their two-minute drill was cut short, and it's 42-6. Battle on the wrong side of things in the third quarter. Let's go to the scoreboard here. Hallsville on the road against Palmyra. 22-6 at halftime. The latest score, South Callaway in the lead. The fourth quarter against Van Farr. Joe Collier and the Cap City Cavaliers on the road at Warrensburg to start the season. Three minutes left in the second quarter. A.J. Smith puts the Tigers up 16 with that touchdown run. However, Jalen Thomas for Cap City, 1,500 yards as a freshman, picking up where he left off. 40-yard touchdown here for Cap City to make it an eight-point game, and they are tied at 29 in the fourth quarter. Tied at 29. They had Falcons season opener against the Carrollton Trojans. Head coach Cole Hinton, a head coach there. Now Cole Hinton, the Rockbridge transfer, making his Fayette debut. First drive of the game, Falcons, uh, Micah Estes, a six-yard touchdown. And then a two-point conversion was good. Trojans respond with a touchdown of their own as Kane Gibson takes it himself for the TD. Their two-point failed, though. Third quarter, Falcons are up 16-12, 16-12 at last check. Moberly was 5-6 a year ago, but gained confidence with a playoff win over Southern Boone. Could the Spartans roll some momentum into 2023? They opened at home against Smith Cotton tonight. Moberly started off strong. Jackson Engel finds Gage St. Clair to put points on the board just three minutes into the game, and the Spartans are pumped up. One yard line looking like a touchdown, but the Spartans were in an illegal formation. So it's a no-go on this one. It was still 7-0. 
Rushing game looking good for Smith Cotton. Their quarterback, Bo Gray, takes it for 19 yards. It was 21 to seven Moberly in the third quarter. Eldon facing Fulton. The 11th matchup between those two in program history. Fulton starts off with a strong drive as junior quarterback Tyson Douglas puts it in to put Fulton up seven early in the first. Then out of nowhere, senior Michael Rugen takes it into the end zone. This is for Eldon. That gets the Mustangs on the board. That made it 7-6. Fulton still with the lead. Eldon Jr. Andrew Beanland takes off sprinting after another touchdown. That's for the Mustangs, and they had the lead. Let's check the score. Eldon up big in the third quarter. MMA in Russellville. Russellville's Nolan Gartner dashing into the end zone for a 30-yard touchdown. Two-point conversion made it 8-0. Russellville's defense taking down MMA in the end zone for a safety. That made it 10-0 Russellville. And then Russellville's Justin Seaver speeds through the defense. That's a 70-yard touchdown. This made it 17-0 Russellville in the second quarter. They led 49-0 in the second half at last check. Back to the scoreboard.